Well, James, so here you are. It's Leeds and St. Helens. A game that we're used to seeing in grand finals, but probably we didn't expect to maybe see this in. Certainly not if you listen to the experts. Yeah, obviously a lot, a lot's been made this year of uh, you know the form of Wigan and Warrington, and you know they finished one and two after the regular rounds, and deservedly so. They, they've been fantastic all year, and they fully deserved to be there. But um, you know, obviously the likes of ourselves and Leeds, we, we've we've been here before, like you've mentioned, and you know we know what it takes to win playoff games, and you know we've both done that, and we find ourselves here at Old Trafford. In some ways, is the pressure off when you go through a playoff campaign when nobody's perhaps looking to you to actually go and win it? Yeah, I think so. I think the pressure is, you know, that it, obviously we've not got that tag as favourites which we've had in the past. So, you know, the pressure could be off a little bit. You don't really have to worry as much about, you know, how, how it's going to go. There's not as much pressure, and especially on the young players as well. I think, you know, it helps them out to just concentrate on the rugby and nothing else. But when you overcome Wigan to get to a final, I suppose you kind of think, well, we've kind of done the hard bit. But they'll probably think the same. They'll lead when they've overcome Warrington. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's you know exactly the same from their point of view. You know, from our point of view, to, to beat Wigan twice, um, you know, especially because throughout the regular season we hadn't beat them, and you know, to do it in the two playoff games is fantastic. And you know, Saints Wigan derby as well probably makes it that little bit more special. But like you said, you know, Leeds beat Warrington to get here, so you know we know what they're capable of. We've obviously been here against them in the past, and. You know, we're under no illusions you know, about the task ahead. Just going back to that game though against Wigan, I, I spoke to some fans of both clubs who we had them head to head and the, the banter and the rivalry was there for all to see. It was extra special to actually get to a final having overcome them. It's, it's the icing on the cake for the St. Helens fan. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, you know, obviously the St. Wigan rivalry is there you know, for everyone in the town, in both towns really. And, um, you know, it's, that's probably, like you said, it, you know, it was the icing on the cake. It was a massive performance from, from everybody involved in the squad. And, you know, I think all the lads and, and staff and everybody involved and can hold their heads up high. And, you know, it was just a great, a great occasion, really, a great feeling after the game that it was against Wigan. And obviously to see the, the fans' faces, uh, you know, they're coming to Old Trafford again and, you know, and hopefully it could be our year. But that game is gone now. You've got to go again. Is there still enough in the tank to give it one last hurrah? Yeah, there's, you know, there's always stuff left in the tank for a grand final. I think if you ask any player, you know, his leg could be falling off, and uh, you know, any player would, would do anything to play in a grand final. And, you know, like I've said, it's it's Leeds again. We know what what's expected of us. We know what to expect from them, and uh, it's just going to be a massive game, massive test. But you know, literally, it comes down to one one game of rugby league between you know who's going to be crowned the champions. Is there a little bit of revenge as well in mind because they've tended to get the better of you in these games lately? Yeah, they have. It's um, you know previous experiences at Old Trafford haven't been haven't been too good. We've obviously you know Leeds included. So, uh, but you know I think this year I think you know what's probably important is we just kind of treat this as a fresh game, fresh start. And you know there's players who haven't played in the grand final before. Obviously a new coach who hasn't been to Super League grand final. It's just a, you know like I say a fresh game. We treat this totally separate and you know kind of not dwell on the on past past experiences which have been quite negative. So. You know, if we just go out there and do our jobs and um, you know, treat this as a, a fresh start, then I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that we'll be OK. There's some young lads as well. This will be their first time. and you know, they, They've made a real exciting statement, shall we say, during the course of the season. And this is the stage where they need to uh, keep on impressing. Yeah, they've been fantastic. I think every one of them can, can hold the head up high. Uh, you know, it's fantastic that every, every player in our squad now has made the debut. You know, the, all the young lads that come through the academy, they've all made the debut. And, you know, it's everybody who's come in has made a proper claim for a, you know, a, a first team jersey. They've not just come in and filled a position. They, you know, they've gone out and played their heart and soul out, and you know, and really made a claim. And uh, you know, it's fantastic for all the young lads and, and all the players involved. Really, that you know, it's a real team effort, and we've all just carried on, got our heads down, done our jobs, what's expected of us, and. You know, hopefully we can do that one last time on Saturday. It has been a nightmare here in terms of injuries, though. I don't know whether you've ever known anything like this, but Roy Simmons as well, like you say, a new coach. He's had to contend with all this. He's chucked in some young guys. Probably didn't know how they would fare, but they proved him, uh, you know, worthwhile for actually giving them the, the legs to actually, uh, you know, play in the first team rugby league. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. I think all the young lads, you know, they obviously, you know, Royce would have seen little bits on video and stuff, but before he's come over, he's not probably, you know. 100% sure of what lads are capable of and they've, they've all just kind of grabbed the opportunity with two hands and, and done what's asked of them and, and that's been fantastic for the club, fantastic for the town that they're all St. Helens players and, and obviously they've rewarded um, Royce's faith in them by performing you know, to the same standard as, um, as players that have kind of come out of the squad through injury and stuff so 
like you said, you know, there's a lot been made of the injuries, and you know, it's full credit to to everybody involved that's kind of uh, you know got through that time. What's Royce been like then as a coach? Because I suppose in some ways people were perhaps thinking this was going to be a transitional year for St Helens, but still, you're in a grand final. Yeah, it's. Um, like I say, you know, we, we probably wouldn't have been expected to be here, but you know, we find ourselves here again. And like you say, it's full credit to everyone involved from the playing staff, but like you say, coaching staff as well. And you know, Royce has been a massive help with that. He's come in this year. Obviously, a new coach brings new ideas and uh, you know, different aspects and different views on you know how our team should play the game. And you know, he's he's brought different little bits of structure to our game that I think have. Uh, you know, been invaluable. Really, They've, you know, whoever's coming in now knows what what the job is, what what's expected of them, and you know, and, and what I really like about Royce is he's a straight talking kind of bloke. There's no hers and graces. It's you know what you see, what you get. He tells it how it is, and you know he's a real great bloke off the field as well. He's really approachable, and I think that's really important in a in a first team coach that you know is someone who players can feel comfortable with having a you know a chapter about anything you know if it's outside of rugby as well I suppose for you as a, a senior player they've kind of looked at you the young lads to actually lead by example and is there extra pressure on your shoulders when you've lost some experienced players like we're saying it's a bit of a transition or one or two have moved on but still you're there competing and, and you say you're the, one of the the elder statesmen shall we say yeah it's a bit it's a bit strange in a way that you know I'm kind of classed as one of the senior players now but um, I just try and obviously just get on with my own job and I don't try and like you know, change the way I am or the way I play. You know, if enough, I just play the, you know, play my own game, play what I'm capable of, and and go out there. And obviously, you know, if any of the young lads want to chat about anything or any advice on anything, obviously they all know I'm there. I'm an approachable kind of guy, just easy going and down to earth. And um, you know, hopefully that kind of helps the young lads in a way. And you know, that I suppose year on year, you, every player gets that little bit more senior and. You know, I'm just hopefully I can um, continue to, you know, to grow in that manner.